Okay, this is my uh, Tektronix 2247A 100 uh, megahertz oscilloscope. I uh, just took delivery of it yesterday and I'm pretty happy with it. Bought it off of eBay. Uh, as usual, uh, most of the stuff I buy on eBay is pretty good. And uh, uh, this one turns out to be real good, and uh, I just thought I'd make a video. My, this will be the second video. I uh, made one yesterday right after I got it, uh, showing the waveform uh, uh, from my uh, radio. As I talk in the microphone, you can pick up the waveform. But anyway, uh, let's get some close-up stuff here. That's the screen. It's pretty small. I'm going to show some stuff that most videos don't show you. That's how small it is. And this is just a normal hand, even though it looks like a gorilla hand in the video. You know, how big is your hand? Can't be much bigger or smaller than mine. So that's how big it is. The screen, I mean, I'm right on it. The screen is small. However, it lights up fine, and uh, it's not that hard to see things. The little lines on it are the graticle. These are uh, adjustment knobs under here. And uh, here's all the other knobs and settings and stuff. And as much as that looks like, uh, there's a lot of them. Let me tell you, after you played with this thing a little bit, you find out it still has some shortcomings. Uh, I mean, this scope was made in, uh, it's a, uh, what they call analog. Uh, it's not digital, in other words. It's an analog scope, and it's one of the better ones of the day. However, in, uh, made in early the 1990s, uh, it's uh, well out of date here in 2014. And, uh, it, uh, as many knobs and buttons as there are, You'll find it's a little lacking when you uh, know what other scopes of uh, modern ones can do, and this can't. So, but anyways, this I bought this uh, 47A model because it has see all these uh, all these little buttons right here. These are your menu buttons. It has an on-screen menu, uh, and it's not on right now. It has an on-screen menu. And uh, you can do quite a few things here. You can uh, check the volts and it will show you your volts instead of just having to figure it out yourself by the line height or wherever. Uh, the the, the uh, line on your, uh, on your screen is over here and then do the math in your head. Uh, it'll add them up and uh, It'll uh, tell you the time, and uh, it's got a counter timer in the menu that does all that for you, and it'll show uh, little numbers that either down in, in a row here or uh, in a row up here. It'll show you the numbers, and the menu will appear here, and then these buttons here will let you select whatever menu is on the screen. So, uh, anyway, nothing's connected. <coughs> I do have... Um, I do have four. Uh, I do have four uh, probes that I bought uh, down there. They came yesterday also, and uh, then I have. Uh, let me get some light on this over here. Then I have some uh, some other probes that uh, my brother had from when he uh, worked in the casino and using uh, using his tech stuff there. Uh, BNC connectors on one end and clips or uh, probes on the other end. So I've got them here now. And uh, get the light there so it's not glaring. So uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and turn this sucker on. And it's supposed to have a 20 minute waiting period, but uh, I, I have come to think that uh, that that 20 minute uh, warm up period they're talking about means that since this is a portable scope and the guy's carrying it around going from his truck okay it's on 
and you can hear the fan. So if a guy's carrying this out from his truck inside, it's got to warm up to uh, ambient temperature, and I think that's what the 20 minutes is, because the only tube in here is that uh, CRT tube with a line you see there. Anyway, uh, here's here's this will show the voltage that you've set uh, over here with this with this knob, and this will show your uh, your time, your seconds over here on this is channel one these here channel two and then this is your uh, time so you set you set the uh, you set the time with this one and that'll be that'll show here and then your menu when you push this uh, menu button over here it, they'll show up here and we'll do that later so uh, this is about a six minute video right here. I'm going to stop it now because it's a lot easier to edit and upload it when they're not 30 minute long videos. So anyway, uh, let's turn this light off. There you can uh, kind of get a better idea. See the, uh, the buttons and uh, stuff, they all light up and uh, and then uh, the screen lights up. Now, now you see, see this uh, kind of ghosty line here and one above there, the fading out type of lines. Like, uh, those are not very prominent to your eyeball. But somehow uh, doing this digital camera, they uh, show up pretty good. Something to do with this phosphor interacting with this digital uh, sensor, I guess. So, anyway, uh, you know, all I'm seeing right, real bright, is is the uh, is the line, and I'll show you how you can intensify. See it, you intensify it, or you can uh, turn it way down, which is nice and handy. And you can also do the same with the, these numbers here. Uh, all the text is the same. It'll it'll go up and down here. So uh, you know the screen will last years and years longer, I guess, if you turn it way down, which I do when it's just sitting here and I'm not actually using it. And if I don't use it for very long, I just turn it off because, like I said, it does not really need that 20 minute wait up warm up time that the book calls for. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, I'll uh, reset this uh, camera lens to macro so I can get up close. See, see if I get any closer than this, it doesn't really want to focus good. Let's see. So, so I'll reset the camera and uh, the next video we'll uh, get in and get a closer look. And that's about the end of that.